Everton midfielder Dele has opened up about his traumatic childhood in a very emotional interview with Gary Neville. On his recent struggles, he said, it's hard to pinpoint one exact moment when I started to feel that things weren't right. Probably the saddest moment for me was when Mourinho was manager. I think I was 24. I remember there was one session, like one morning, I woke up and I had to go to training. This is when he'd stopped playing me and I was in a bad place. I remember just looking in the mirror. I mean, it sounds dramatic, but I was literally staring in the mirror and I was asking if I could retire now at 24, doing the thing I love. For me, that was heartbreaking to even have had that thought at 24, to want to retire. That hurt me a lot. Now, it was a very raw and upsetting interview for anyone who's seen it. He opened up about being sexually abused as a child, how he was dealing drugs as a child, and how a lot of this trauma from his childhood has gone on to lead him to some of the matters that he's talked about in this interview, an addiction to sleeping pills, having to go into rehab as well. Frank LaBeouf's with us now. Ali and Shaka still here. It just goes to show, Shaka, we never truly know what's going on in somebody's background and off the pitch when we are seeing trouble, struggles like this? No, no, you don't. But b before I, I get into addressing that, uh, let me just give Deli, Deli his, his, his credit here for coming out and speaking as honestly and openly as he has about, about his issues. Without him knowing it, I can guarantee he's having an impact, a positive impact, on some little kid somewhere who he may never meet. Uh, so I, I applaud him for that, for, for just from the start. I, we, we have to acknowledge how much good his honesty is doing and how wide um, that good will be spread. Um, and, and here's the difficulty of sometimes the job that we do. We are being asked to pass opinion, give judgment on what we see on the surface. But we, as football players, as human beings understand that all of us are so much deeper. It takes so much more. We all have our, our own individual stories to tell. Some are a little bit more, more difficult than others. Um, but yet we are having to, to pass judgment almost and, and judge people equally. So the humanity of, of Delhi, what he's had to deal with, how he's coped with it, I think shines through. The other thing that I think is, is unf well, I'm not sure if unfortunate is, is the word. Um, certainly, that this is not a sentiment shared by, by any of us in, in, in this studio or on this show. But the sentiment you hear so often from outside is that, well, you're making this amount of money, or you're a professional footballer, or you're doing this as though that is supposed to shed you from your hum humanity or protect you from, from traumas that affect every single one of us. And, and we see quite clearly that that is not true, that there's a human side to this game, there's a human side to players that we don't see, we don't appreciate. He mentioned Jose Mourinho in, in this interview, and again, Similarly, this is a difficult thing about being a manager. You are having to manage a group of, in this case, men. Um, of course, it, it could be women as well, without knowing their full stories and doing the best that you can in a circumstance that you are not trained to do. Jose Mourinho is not trained to, to, to see somebody's traumas, to see somebody's hurt or, or deal with it. You try to do it, and we credit managers when they get it right as being good man managers. But that's not what they're there for. That's not, that's not what they're best at. So you sympathize as well when managers don't get that right. And it, it shows, I, I guess, a deeper need for professionals, mental health professionals, in this game, something that's just coming into the fore. Um, to have a, a, a more direct impact with players in understanding personalities um, and getting them to, to, to open up about their traumas. And, and in closing, I, I'd, I'd, I'd just like to say that so many times we talk about mental health and mental health issues and traumas, and those can have a very dark, 
negative, sometimes fatal result. For all, for all that Delhi Ali has gone through and for all the good that his words are doing, he's here. And I think we, we also have to be thankful for that. Not many can get through that darkness, but he did. And I think we, we're all a little bit better, at the very least a little bit more appreciative for what players go through. And as, uh, as Shaka just said, not many can get through that. To then get through it and be able, obviously, to still deal with it, being into rehab, but to be able to come out, as Shaka said, and be so brave to speak about it openly as he had, you can see why it has resonated with so many now it's been released. And part of that has to do with the locker room culture. And I can't speak for the current locker room culture. That may have changed, but... And nowadays, for somebody to come out and talk about these issues openly and mental health wasn't nearly as accepted as it would be today. Uh, so to your point, I think there is a level of maturity that his own experiences provide Delhi. But in order to get that perspective and that level of maturity, he has gone through very dark moments. And I think what was most challenging from his perspective, and I don't want to speculate here because this is a very uh, delicate subject. I have to imagine that for him, playing the game was a natural outlet. That while the life around the game or his personal life was dark and there were some traumas early on in his life, playing the game was that a safe haven, a safe place, a natural outlet where he had freedom of expression, where he had freedom of ideas, where he could control the outcome. It wasn't his, his surroundings that was controlling the, out, the outcome. It was him that was controlling the outcome because he had the ball at his feet. When that game is taken away from him because of lack of performance or because of not meeting expectations or because he's not scoring enough goals or because he's not impacting the game, and now the safe haven, the safe place, the outlet is creating more anxiety, is bringing more pain, then you have to imagine what was once a dark place became even darker. And that, I think, is the part that I have to imagine must have been most difficult for him. That the field, the training ground, the locker room, the team, the games was no longer the support system that he had used over the course of his life to be able to cope with whatever else he had going on and whatever other traumas he had in his life. His recognition of that, I think, takes great courage. And I think it takes great maturity. And being able to say, I need help. See, we all, at whatever level we play, there is an element of ego that goes with being a professional athlete, not just a professional soccer player, but a professional athlete, that you feel like you can be the best on the field at whatever moment, that you belong at that stage. And that element of ego and confidence propels you forward. So it takes a great deal of courage to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I need help. I can't do this on my own. I have to put my ego aside. I can no longer be the guy that I once was, and I can no longer do this to myself. I need somebody to help me, and I need somebody to talk to, and I need somebody to open up to. And this has to be part of his, his therapy, if you will, being able to come out and speak so freely about this. I think... The level of courage that it takes is something that I, I simply cannot relate to. Uh, it, 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 it's amazing for him to be able to speak so freely and so openly about this. It's amazing that, that he has had the, the, the stage to be able to do this. And that, and I echo Shaka's point, uh, the impact that he's having. He, he may be doing this for his own therapy, for his own well-being, but he's touching so many lives that he's not aware of. And it's, uh, it's something that doesn't happen naturally to guys at this level to, to recognize weakness, to recognize that you need help, to know that you're not doing it alone, and to know that 
you need somebody to pull you from the darkness and to help you out. To take that step takes courage, and to do what he's doing now takes courage as well. And you have to hope, Frank, that he gets to see and feel this outpouring of support that he's had since revealing just how traumatic his childhood was. Yes, definitely. And um, I feel bad today. You know, after reading the article, I, I felt awful because I've been like everybody else, you know. Uh, we always talk about, and I did about Christian Pulisic, talking about the consistency of a player. And uh, you could decide what you know and what you see. And uh, for delay, I was always, you know, um, stunned by this talent, uh, his quality, but always criticizing the fact that I didn't kind of, what I saw, didn't take it seriously. So I don't want to repeat what Shaka and Ali perfectly said about what he is, what he did, and what he's going to bring to the world. And for people who have uh, those kind of traumas and uh, being able to speak out says how courageous he is and brave. And, um, but I, I want to have a message to the fans, to uh, people who are watching football, uh, who are thinking that sometimes football players are kind of robots and uh, have to perform uh, week in, week out without having any kind of issues, especially psych psychological issues. You have to perform, be good, because you are paid so, so much, because you are famous, because you have everything, so perform and shut up. They are, and we are, and I was a human being, and Dele just said something so useful for the world, for young people, for football players, just to show how difficult it is to have a life and to be happy in his life, to perform well, to hide everything from, from, from the others, which is very, very hard when you are a celebrity. And uh, to be able to speak out says a lot about the mentality of the guy. So first, I want to apologize. Hopefully, he's going to forgive to everybody who have been critical to, uh, towards, him, uh, towards him, himself. But, but first, I want to say, Congratulations, you were able to do so, to speak out and to express and you're going to help so many, many people and uh, hopefully you're going to feel better soon. You will be able to talk to many people and you will be understood and accepted by others and, um, and it's a great message for the fans, you know, sometimes just stop saying, oh, come on, run, do it, it's easy, you want your you money. Just try to see a little bit behind the scenes. Yeah, of course, we send our love to Delhi and we commend his bravery as well. We hope for much better days ahead for him. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.